So unless you've been living under a rock, or in my case, on a South Carolina beachfront for the last couple of weeks, you know abortion is back in the news in a big way in this country. Now, I have personally opined on this issue on numerous occasions in the past. I've made my views perfectly clear. I am very pro-life. I believe that life is the first liberty, the indispensable liberty, and without it, the other liberties really don't matter all that much. I also know that my news outlet is the host of a discussion. And my news outlet, by the way, employs people who don't always share my views uh, and who do not share my view on the issue of, of abortion. I'm opening my mic up to anyone that's got an intelligent take on this issue, folks, because I do believe there's more than one side to it, and all sides need to be heard. And we need to understand each other. We need to look past sort of the, you know, surface debate and get to the heart of the issue. And we only do that by being honest with each other and by sharing, you know, heartfelt, deep takes on this issue. But setting that aside for a moment, what you believe on the issue of abortion, on the repeal of Roe v. Wade, I wanted to talk about our ability to have that discussion. Because to me, that seems pretty fundamental to what we're doing here at Fitz News, which is, again, hosting a conversation. There's a law that's been introduced in the South Carolina legislature this week. It's called S 1373. It's been introduced by a trio of upstate conservative senators, Richard Cash, Rex Rice, and Danny Verdon. These are all social conservative Republican senators from the South Carolina upstate. And their bill is a broad expansion of the heartbeat bill, which was passed last year before the repeal of Roe v. Wade, which banned abortions after the detection of a fetal heartbeat. Now, these three lawmakers, Cash, Verdon, and Rice, want to dramatically expand uh, the criminalization of abortion from what the heartbeat bill enacted to an entirely broader, much bigger definition of what constitutes abortion. Basically, anything from the moment of conception would be outlawed under this new law, this proposed law. But there's a part of it that is troubling to me. Part of it that goes beyond just regulating abortion in South Carolina and regulates speech in South Carolina. And I'm talking about a, pro, a provision of this bill which would criminalize anyone from providing information to a pregnant woman that might be used in an abortion. And in fact, specifically, and I'm quoting from the bill here, anyone who hosts a website which, quote, provides information on how to obtain an abortion. And I want to stop and think about that for a second, because again, as a personal pro-lifer, I'm not going to publish something that I believe would lead someone to go get an abortion, but I am going to cover the issue fairly. I'm going to cover uh, the perspectives of people who might present that information. I'm going to provide guest columns that may passionately argue in favor of abortion and might tell women how and where to go get one. So would that be illegal under this new law? Yes. In a word, yes. And so that troubles me, people. Whatever you think of abortion, whether you support it, whether you oppose it, we at the very least have to be able to talk about it. And we can't talk about it if lawmakers in Columbia, South Carolina, are passing bans on speech related to abortion, which is what is included in this new law, literally prohibiting people and media outlets. It specifically says hosts of websites. It specifically prohibits these people from even discussing certain parts of this issue. And that's wrong, folks. And unfortunately, that's become an all too uh, common from Republicans in the South Carolina General Assembly. They're doing it on this issue. They recently did it on the election reform issue by passing a bill that basically gags the director of, of the uh, election commission from even talking about problems with that with that bill or, or the election issue. They also did it back in 2018 in the state budget on an issue related to uh, allegedly anti-Semitic speech. They essentially passed a bill that prohibited people from criticizing certain parts of uh, you know Isra being anti-Israeli. Uh, you couldn't say certain things that were anti-Israeli under that provision of the state budget. I get it, people. We want to take firm stances. We want to take hard, go hard to the paint, so to speak. But we cannot, under any circumstances, as we weigh in on these hot button issues, take away people's right to discuss them. And as long as Fitz News is around, we're going to continue to not only advocate passionately for what we believe and what I believe individually, but we're going to fight to the very bitter end to protect the right of people to have their say in the debate, even if it's diametrically opposed to what I believe.